electronic energy levels. In ultraviolet and visible regions, rotational vibrational and electronic transitions do occur. Hence, the spectrum can be fairly complicated. However, relative to the electronic transitions, rotational changes are very small and will be ignored in this case. Vibrational transitions accompanying electronic transitions are considered. Hence, the equation for the unharmonic oscillator applies. Change in electronic structure allows interaction with radiation to occur. All molecules will show electronic spectra. Selection rules in respect of vibrational or electronic transitions are irrelevant in this case. In this case, the probability of a particular transition occurring depends solely on the relative positions of the two potential energy internuclear distance curves, i.e. the Mohs curves in the case of stable molecules. We will look at the three examples of electronic transitions. Frank Condon's principle, that is, electronic energy transitions take place so rapidly that a vibrating molecule does not change its internuclear distance during the transition. This means that in the potential energy diagrams, the ele electronic transitions between vibrational states can be represented by vertical lines. As shown here, we have the ground state shown by that curve, while the excited state sh is shown by that curve, and these are the vibrational energy levels in the excited state, and this is one of the vibrational levels in the ground state. And the spectra that results from transitions between these two is given at the bottom here. Let us consider a molecule at lowest vibrational state of the ground electronic state. The probability of a transition to a particular vibrational level depends on the position of the oscillating atom at the time of the transition. This can be obtained from the vibrational wave functions of the ammonic oscillator, which in a diatomic molecule is illustrated in the above diagrams. They should be thought of as probability curves for the position of the atoms during vibration. At low values of V, the internuclear spacing approximates to R, but at higher values of V, that's the vibrational quantum number, the internuclear spacing will be much higher or lower than R. These are represented by the following three positions. Position number one, or A. We have that energy curve directly above that one there. That is the ground state R similar to excited state R. The ground and excited electronic states have approximately the same equilibrium nuclear distance. Hence, V double prime equals naught to V prime equals naught is the most probable one, and the vibrational lines on the resulting spectrum indicate this. If we shift the excited state a little bit to the right, then the transition will be between there and not here and there and there, but right there. Yeah, the excited state R is ground is greater than the ground state R. Okay, the minimum potential energy of the excited state is at a greater internuclear distance than that of the ground state. That is, the bond has stretched, and the most probable transition is now zero to two, as shown in the diagram above. So now we have that going there not in, on any of the lower ones. That's C. Now let's look at the dissociation limit being, exe being exceeded. Okay? 
if the upper state has a significant like greater than distance than the ground state, the dissociation limit of the excited state is likely to be exceeded. When dissociation occurs, the spectrum displays a continuum. The wave numbers that reach the most 